Hey folks, Jonathan here. Working on our 55 Chevrolet truck with the Perkins. Uh, still don't have the mounts yet, or the intermediate motor mounts, I guess what they're called, for the uh, Ford, so we're, we haven't set the engine in it yet. Uh, got this engine, of course, back out. You've seen that, and uh, got it in here. Took a few things off, throw a little paint on it. I mean, I've got a lot more to do on it here, but I uh, want to go ahead and get started on the, the exhaust manifold for the turbo. and. Our problem we ran into on this, uh, when we put this engine in the, the 60 Ford for the rat rod build, we was able to put the engine a lot farther forward. And if you remember, the exhaust came out of the back of the turbo and went down. And on this, where the engine's sitting in this truck and the way the firewall's made, we can't do that because uh, I'd have to cut into the firewall for, you know, and make a tunnel for the exhaust. And I don't want, I don't want to have to do that. So. What we're going to do, and if you remember right, we've done away with this fill, but this particular engine do, does not have a fill on the valve cover, so we're still going to have to use either this fill or take the valve cover off and, you know, weld something up on it where we can fill from there. Uh, on the last one, our return from our turbo went back into this hole, so we will figure out, you know, how we're going to do that and uh, probably end up probably end up putting a fill in the valve cover and that way we can get this out of our way completely for the turbo because instead of using the original manifold and which is right here and having that turbo of course it's not going to stay on the front but having that turbo sitting back so far on the engine we're going to actually build a manifold and move that turbo farther forward and uh, I don't think we're going to we might lower it down a little bit but uh, we don't have as much height, height issues with this engine uh, just because the height from the frame to the top of the hood on the 55 Chevrolet is taller. And, uh, you know, this is going to be our tallest point either way. So that would be the problem, you know, instead of our, our uh, turbo being too high. So uh, we're going to get started on making it and we'll make the flanges and then uh, we're going to go from there. It's going to be sort of like a sheet metal. Uh, used to make a lot of sheet metal intakes, but and usually you know the the headers was always you know round tubing, but on pulling tractors and such. But I'm going to go ahead and do a sheet metal style on this, and uh, basically what it will be will be a Y that comes to a center point, and uh, with a turbo flange, and I'll have to make the turbo flange. But I do have a turbo here. But it's a little bit smaller than what I want to run, and uh, this is actually a turbo off of a uh, a 3066 Caterpillar engine, which was in a uh, 30 uh, 320 Traco, and uh, as you can see, it's a really small force on it. But the header, for, I mean the flange for the uh, turbo is the same as the the flange on like an HX30, and I think I'm going to go ahead and order a, a new HX30 for this, but. Uh, we can go ahead and use, you know, this is a pattern for our flange and stuff and get it set on there. And uh, like I said, we're just going to try to keep it low. We'll keep it tucked in some. I don't want to stick it out real far, but uh, shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem, you know, especially only having two ports. You know, I, I'm usually never messing with anything that's only got two exhaust ports on it, but uh, which is kind of surprising on this. But you know, you got to realize also that this cylinder and this cylinder does not fire. It at the same time so they're not on exhaust stroke at the same time so you know they can share that port and be putting exhaust out at different you know different times so you know that's not as bad I mean I'm you may lose some efficiency from it but it's not as bad as you would think but uh, go ahead and get some header plates made or they get the uh, flanges made uh, probably 3 8 maybe uh, something pretty heavy and we will go from there okay folks here's what we've got I've uh, I took a piece of uh, this is 3 8 and uh, hang wire. Took a short piece of it because I couldn't find any plate. I cut a couple pieces off of it and uh, made the pieces I need. And I put them in the uh, milling machine. I squared them up real good, made them exactly the same size, and uh, got all four corners square on it. And I've done that because we're going to machine this hole in the middle, and we want to make it exactly like this gasket. And that way, it'll the port will match up good. And what I wanted to do. Instead of making it the outside shape of that gasket, I actually made them so I could uh, 
overlap and have it squared on the sides and that, that'll also give me more room to weld to but I mean there's plenty of room on the engine to do that and you know it was to put it in the uh, the metal machine you know it's a lot easier to clamp on that and not have to turn the uh, device and uh, so we will mark it out and when I'm done I'll surface grind these and uh, make them nice but I mean it's just you know use steel we're gonna I, I think I've got some uh, some scrap new stuff we're going to use for the uh, for the intake itself, but for the flanges we're putting this used stuff on. But you know, like I said, I get it done, then I uh, surface grind it. It'll uh, it'll be like new. Okay, folks, I've got my uh, flanges made, and they fit pretty good. Uh, it's going to flow just fine, I'm sure. But next is to uh, what we're going to do. Basically, is it's going to be four pieces, or well, five pieces when I'm done. There will be a top, a bottom, there will be two sides, and then there will be a one piece that comes up and wraps back in. And, uh, and of course, then your flange on it. But uh, what we're going to do now is take a piece of uh, paper, I think I've got some old cereal box paper or something, and we're going to make a top piece that actually comes in. The reason I'm going to do that top one first is the clearance is the closest on it, so we want to make it where it comes out and flat. And of course, come out and around the uh, intake manifold, and then it's going to be in, you know, toward each other. So basically, we're making a one top of a Y, and uh, we'll go ahead and I think I, what I'll do is I'm going to make me two plates that go on the inside of these flanges, and they're going to be solid pieces of uh, probably flashing, and we'll screw them on there, and that way, and I'll cover my intake good. And that way we can put our piece up and tack it where we want it with these flanges on because I don't want to uh, take any chances on getting any, you know, slag or anything down into the uh, exhaust manifold. So we'll make them, we'll get them bolted on and tightened up. i got to find a couple of bolts for here that I don't have the them big, big washer head bolts is not going to work. But uh, it's supposed to have studs in it. I had to borrow the studs out of this one when we done the other one. Got one stud left in it. But... Uh, We'll get something on it and couldn't get them capped off where they can't get anything in them and then uh, I'll start drawing out the top piece. Alright, show you more. Okay folks, here's what we've got drawn out. This is going to be our top plate. I brought these out a little bit because we've got to have room to weld that flange on. So I want to be able to get in there to it good. Okay, we've got our piece cut out and as you can see we're using it on top, it's going to run into the bolts. So I've got to put some straights on it here. So I'm going to extend it out straight just a little bit. And we'll get some masking tape and just tape to our pattern. Just bring it out just a little ways and uh, that way it'll clear. Probably, uh, well, it's probably going to be about an inch time we're done. And then uh, that should clear it. And then we will uh, we'll make a bottom one just like it. Now, they'd be different if I was going to either, you know, I could roll it up or down. You know, if I wanted it to come down, I could actually put a roll in this and, you know, it would actually be on it and roll down just like this. And this is the way we used to do intakes, on not exhaust, but now intakes when we uh, tractor pulled for the updraft carburetors. And, uh, and I could actually bring this down some and that would... Uh, just about solved my bolt problem but I don't want to I really don't want to do that and uh, you know the way this is and I'm going to be using I'm going to go ahead and use 8 inch steel but the way this is is when that exhaust comes out if it hits a surface direct it's going to have a real good hot spot in it and uh, if I raise it up if I get it straight it's going to actually flow really good and uh, and I don't know that it's going to make that much difference on this but we're going to do it anyway but uh, but I'm going to add to that, and then I'll go ahead and get some steel cut out. We'll put it up here and see what she looks like. All right, show you more. Okay, folks, I've got our two of our pieces cut out here, and uh, as you can see, we need to make a top and a bottom, and we're going to actually get these in and uh, start welding up. I think I'll make the flange, and what we'll do is. Uh, Weld these to the uh, to the actual engine flanges or where where it bolts to the head, and then uh, we're going to make the turbo flange, and we'll weld it on, and that'll hold everything together enough to uh, 
to take it back off and uh, uh, you know make all our pieces we need to make and we'll probably clamp it down to the welding table you know to keep it square and then when we're done we can still surface grind it and you know get it back exactly straight because I'm sure it may warp a little bit and uh, you know we want it to bolt good and good and tight on there and be be level uh, this is like I said eighth inch so once it's all welded together good it should be plenty strong enough and then uh, we'll probably still make a a uh, bracket to to come off of uh, maybe a bolt somewhere to, to actually hang the uh, turbo you know because it's quite a bit of weight hanging out there and we don't want this thing to get vibration and because it's sheet metal we don't want it cracking so we'll we'll actually make a bracket so it'll hold up really well all right show you more okay we've got the bottom one tacked on and uh, of course we tacked it on from the bottom side here uh, a little close on the bolts. I'm going to try to get some socket head cap screws. If not, I'll get the uh, I'll take some original bolts and I'll actually cut the heads down to uh, I think they're 14 millimeter now, so I'll maybe cut them to 3 8 We'll make them uh, at least the outsides of them SAE. But uh, you can see what I've got going on and how I'm doing it. And then we've got our we've got our top plate, uh, which is going to go in. And it'll get welded in, and then uh, we will uh, put our flange on, get our, get our height right between the two of them, and uh, then we can put enough weld on it that we can take it off. And then uh, I think I, I've got some steel that I can, I've got some one-inch thick steel I'm going to clamp this to. I was going to put it on the, the table, but I think I can uh, probably C-clamp it really good to that plate, you know, the long plate to keep it, keep it straight, and uh, we'll just keep at it. Okay, folks, got the plans made. I actually welded some studs into it from the back side. Got them welded in really good. Got uh, the top piece on, the bottom piece on. Just got everything tacked. And uh, probably leave it just like it is and pull it off. And then uh, go ahead and get to welding everything up. We'll make, you know, a piece to cover here. And then on the inside and on the other side. But uh, I think it's going to work out fine. It should flow really good. Okay, folks, we're going to try to set the uh, 302 in the old Falcon. I got my brackets. Wasn't real impressed with them, but I got them. Uh, we'll make them here in the United States somewhere. But uh, I feel like I probably could have made a set to turn out a little better than what they turned out. But you got to live with it, I guess. Uh, I'm going to try to put motor and transmission in together. That's why I've got the car up on block. And uh, I've got it on concrete blocks and that's not a smart idea especially if you're getting up under it but if you do it turn them this way don't turn them with the holes sticking out and uh, we'll try not to be up under it but uh, I can put my jack stand under it too but this is just a little safer to in case I bump it it won't uh, fall over but uh, a good set of ramps would be nice but I just don't have any but we're gonna have to angle that engine down pretty good to get it to fit in there and that's why I raised it because I knew that when you angle it down that transmission tells you have to try to go in the ground if you're not careful and uh, we're gonna see what we can do here and I'm working alone so I may uh, have to yell for my son here shortly we'll see what happens save more okay folks sorry about the light here uh, did get the engine in had to take the headers off and there's no way that they're gonna work uh, Exhaust manifolds won't work either, so we're going to have to find something for it, or the stock manifolds won't. And, uh, but we did get it in. And motor and transmission together, it wasn't too bad. Just had to get it up high and, you know, tilt it down pretty good. But, uh, we're going to have to hunt some more parts up, and I'll make a rear cross member and go ahead and get a drive shaft made and stuff. And, uh, you know, we'd like to get it to where we could at least, uh, you know, move it around and, drive it a little bit just to so it's not sitting but uh anyway appreciate you watching till next time bye